Now, what is Medicaid? Well, Medicaid in general, folks, is a federally funded program that's administered by the state. So it's both federal and state in nature. The federal government sets the basic guidelines to, for Medicaid and the states administer those guidelines and can add to them so long as they're not overly restrictive. Now, Medicaid provides, in general, insurance for low-income families. Now, there is a facet of Medicaid that does help elderly folks, folks over the age of 65 in general, that when they get to a point in their lives where they need long-term care services called skilled care, Medicaid would be the program that an individual would apply to in order to get what we phrase as long-term care services. Now, when an individual fills out an application, what we phrase as the Division of Medical Assistance, it'll be a division within every state that will administer Medicaid will place that person in a particular program. The programs that I wanna focus on in general would be those for individuals that are around the age of 60 and are planning to stay home in general. They're what's phrased as community programs. Now, one of the first community programs that the Division of Medical Assistance will try to place an individual in would be what's called the standard program I'm from Massachusetts, so it would, it's called Mass Health Standard. And in the standard program, there are basically three categories of individuals that can qualify or be eligible for community-based services. The first two groups of folks that may qualify for the standard program fall below the age of 65. So if they're below the age of 60, they must have a disability in general in order to qualify for the standard program. Disability meaning they must qualify for social security disability and be qualified in that way. The second group is above the age of 60 and would need to be institutionalized but for or stay in the community because of the standard program and the services provided by the standard program. But the third group, folks, is the one I wanna focus on, that is above the age of 65. And when it comes to qualifying for the standard program and you're above the age of 65, that means that the Division of Medical Assistance will look at both your assets and your income to determine whether you qualify for the program in general when an individual's assets are reviewed, they can't have any more than $2,000 in their name and their primary residence, their home, is not a countable asset. When it comes to income, there's a calculation that's based upon the poverty level. When a person qualifies for the standard program, they can receive services such as medical care, inpatient, outpatient services. They can also receive long-term care services in their home. The second major Medicaid community program, in other words, for people that are staying at home, is what's phrased as frail elder waiver. And with the waiver program, the typical setup is a person needs hospital care, they come out of the hospital, and then they need to go into rehab for a time in order to receive physical therapy or whatever it is they need before they can return to the community. Now, in order to qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver Program, an individual must be at the point where they could be institutionalized, but they elect to go home back into the community in order to receive benefits that will allow them to stay in the community. They have to be above the age of 60 and be in a condition, once again, that qualifies with Medicaid for the Frail Elder Waiver Services. Now, as with many other programs that are offered through Medicaid, they do look at your assets. And once again, that level of having $2,000 does apply. And they also look at your income. And the calculation is based upon the poverty level. Now, the third major program is Senior Care Options. And with Senior Care Options, an individual must be above the age of 65. 
they have to meet the asset and income levels that I mentioned in the previous programs. And with this program, it's kind of a hybrid. It's a combination where it joins with Medicare. And Medicare is the program, remember, that everybody receives in general for insurance when they hit the age of 65. So it combines with the services of Medicare and mixes the services of Medicaid. And so some of the long-term care services may be offered to the individual who qualifies for the Senior Care Options Program while they receive their medical benefits, their medical insurance, in other words. Now, the fourth program that I wanted to discuss, which once again is offered through Medicaid, and it's in for individuals staying in the community, is kind of the granddaddy of them all, if you would. It's called PACE. It's the Program of All-Inclusive Care for the Elderly. And with this program, once again, in general, you have to be over the age of 65. The big issue is to meet the income levels, which go up every year for the PACE program. And you also have to meet the asset levels, $2,000 in your name. They only, if it's a married couple, they, the PACE program only looks at the individual that's applying for the PACE benefits. And once an individual qualifies for the PACE program, a coordinator works with them to ensure that they receive both medical treatment on the medical insurance end of things, whether that's inpatient, outpatient, ambulance services, transportation, along with long-term care services. Uh, and those long-term care services could be in-home services coming in to assist the individual, what, what we call the daily or the activities of daily living. So the PACE program has a coordinator and also a social worker may work with the person as well to assist along the way. So folks, these are the major community programs offered through Medicaid when an individual stays at home. Sometimes if an individual enters into an assisted care facility, so long as the facility accepts community programs, the person may receive those benefits from Medicaid while they are inside an assisted living facility. Now, if you're watching me on Facebook, make sure that you like the video. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe in the lower right-hand corner or ring the bell, as they say. Make sure that you check out the links to some of my prior videos that will be included in the description of this video. And if you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you check out some of the videos that will be appearing here that are related to the topics that I've been discussing in this video. Dave Cerullo, CerulloLaw.com.